letter H. Let's draw a hedgehog. That's the animal that you voted for, for letter H. So today we will be creating this cute little guy. You are gonna need a couple things before we get started. Same things we use most every week. You're gonna need a pencil with an eraser, either your own separate eraser or one on the end. You're gonna need something for outlining when we're all done. So a black colored pencil, a black marker, or a black crayon. And you're gonna need a piece of paper. I use the paper right out of the printer, but you can use any kind of paper you would like. While you're looking for those items around your house, you wanna find something to color with when we're done. I will be using colored pencils, but crayons would work also. I don't recommend markers too much for this design, only because we're gonna be trying to do fur. And it's a little easier to do fur when we're using colored pencils or crayons. So pause the video, go gather those items, and then I'll meet you back here for our hedgehog. All right, so you're back now. You gathered your pencil, your eraser, your paper, and something to color with. We're gonna be putting our paper horizontal today because we wanna have a lot of room for his round body. I'm gonna show you a couple photographs of a hedgehog. So this one is the one that I'm using to get my proportions down. I really love this big curve of his body and the curve of his face, but I also really like this photograph too because this one shows his eyes when he curls up into a little ball to protect himself, he closes his eyes. And I thought his eyes looked so sweet. So we're gonna morph both those pictures together. Okay, let's begin by taking our paper and finding the center, just like we do every week. We take our paper and we make a dot in the middle. Now remember, you wanna have your paper horizontal, so this direction, and then you're gonna use your pencil to find the center by making a tiny dot. And when I do mine, I'll be using a marker because I'm working on my whiteboard. So you're gonna make a dot in the middle, just like that. That will help you balance out your picture. And the first thing we're gonna be doing is making a very large circle. And that's gonna encompass his entire round body. So I'm gonna start right around here and I'm gonna hover my hand. Now we talked about that the last lesson. When you're hovering your hand, that means you're not just setting your pencil down onto the paper and drawing a circle. You're actually moving your hand in an oval or a circle and then you're just gonna let it brush down whenever you think you have the right side. So go ahead and make a nice big, big oval or circle. That's gonna be his body. So you wanna make it pretty big. That's going around. Now, I know some of you like to draw pretty small, but for this drawing today, you really want to work big because we're starting with the body, then we're going to make it the head. So if you start making a medium-sized circle, then you have a tiny head. It's going to be hard to draw his details. All right, now, anytime you need to stop and pause to erase, go ahead and do that, and then push play whenever you're ready to move on. Okay, from here, we're going to now work on his face. So I'm going to take right here, right where that dot is, and I'm going to form another circle right here in the lower portion. Now, I want you to notice how large I am working. It's very big. I'm making a very big circle here because that is going to encompass his nose, his muzzle, and his eyes. Now, once I have that, I'm going to erase that dot. You don't need it anymore. And now I'm going to actually divide this picture lightly in half by drawing a very light line right down the middle. Now, please make sure you're drawing this very light. You don't want to draw it hard because we're going to be erasing it later. We don't want it to look like he has a big line down the middle of his head. This is going to help me center his face, his nose, his eyes, everything. Now, once I do that, you'll notice his face actually forms almost a heart. Can you see that right there? See how it kind of looks like a heart? So I'm going to step start by taking the inside part of that circle and tucking it in, just like I'm forming a heart. Then I'm going to erase this part right here. I don't need that anymore. Now, I'm not going to erase this line quite yet, but we will get there in just a minute. All right, so now I'm going to follow this center line right down almost to the very bottom pretty low down here, and I'm gonna draw an oval for his nose. Now, you don't wanna make his nose really large. Usually I tell you, make their nose as big, but their nose, they're actually pretty tiny. 
Once I've made his nose, I'm going to draw a letter V. It's not connected, so it's just two nostrils. I'm just kind of cutting them in like this on each side for his nostrils. And then I'm going to start by drawing a line from the tip of his nose on this edge up and out. And then I'm going to match it on this side going up and out. This is going to give him that pointed bridge to his nose. He has a really thin nose, and that thin nose helps him forage in the forest when he is looking for food. He takes that long pointy snout of his, and he digs in through the bushes to find the little grubs and the snails and the lizards and all those little things that he likes to eat. Now, once I've got that done, I can go ahead and erase this middle line. I don't need it anymore. And then I'm going to give him two curved eyes like he is smiling. So I'm going to curve this eye up here and this eye up here. And then I'm going to add a tiny bit of lash on the side right here. Now you don't have to add that. I just like to. And then right under here where that line used to be when we split it down the middle, I'm going to use that line to form the bottom of his mouth. Now, I'm not going to curve that smile up very high, and you'll notice the bottom part of his lip is very close to his nose, so you don't want to make this line very long. So it's a short line. It's a little curve on one side and a little curve on the other. All right, once I've done that, I'm going to just round a little bump underneath. That's going to be his lower chin. And then I'm going to change his face up a little bit. So I'm going to erase all these extra lines. And I want to make sure his cheeks are even on both sides. So we're going to change him and make him fuzzy later. So we don't want to draw this very hard. We're just very lightly just going to make sure his face is even on both sides. So you want to make sure that his chin is even, that his cheeks are even, that he doesn't have like a big bulge on one side and a smaller bulge on the other. Now, once I've done that, it's time to add his ears. So his ears are just two round curves, almost like a mouse's ear. So I'm going to make a rounded curve on this side and a rounded curve on this side. Now, they have very good hearing, and that's important because their eyesight is not very good. Do you know that they only see yellows and browns? So they are nocturnal animals. That means that they... Uh, wake up at night, they do all their hunting at night to look for food, but they don't have very good vision. So they use their uh, ears for listening for high wavelength sounds, and then they know where their little grubs are or their worms, uh, what else they eat, frogs, lizards, and so that's how they forage for their food. All right, once we have their ears, his ears in there, then we're going to go right down here underneath his chin, and we're going to draw a little short line on this side and a short line on this side. Now, please make sure that this is short because we want him to look like he's curled up in a ball, which, by the way, is his defense mechanism. If he is ever scared or frightened, he will curl himself up into the tightest little ball. And these, though they look kind of like fur, these are actually his quills, kind of like a porcupine, but different. And they're much softer. And his do not come out. He can't shoot them out. What he uses them for is that when he curls up into a ball, those quills spread apart like this, and they're very sharp. And they hurt whatever type of animal tries to eat him. So it's similar to like our fingernails. It's made of keratin, which is what our fingernails are made of. So they're bendable, but they are pointed on the end. So they would hurt if you bit down on him. All right, so I'm going to curve a short line on both sides, and then I'm going to add an extra line on this side and an extra line on this side. These are going to be his front paws. So from here, I'm going to draw a rainbow on both sides. Now let's make sure that those rainbows are the same size. This is going to be his little paw. And then I'm going to round it on the bottom. And we'll add some fingers if you want to. Now you could leave his paws like this, but they actually have pointed little fingers, 
with claws. So if you want to add the fingers, you're just going to go like this and draw one, two, three little fingers on this side, one, two, three little fingers on this side. Then we can go in and erase those lines right there. And we'll add fur later. So his fingers are a fleshy material, just like our skin. So those will not have fur on them, but he has a bunch of fur around his fingers. His fur is very, very soft around his arms, his face, and his tummy. But then he has this whole layer of that protective quilt, which we'll draw in just a minute. All right, we are almost drawing, done drawing him. Now what we're gonna do is start to add his fur. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna lightly erase this part right here. Now you're gonna use your eraser. I'm just using my finger. I'm gonna erase right up here at the top of his head and around his ears. And I'm gonna start to give him a little bit more of a fur texture. So what you're gonna do is take your pencil and very softly flip your pencil going up. Now I'm starting right here at that point, right in the middle of his head. And I'm gonna flick very lightly a few little hairs. Now, if you did my bear lesson or my dog lesson, I taught you that your hair grows on an angle. It doesn't just grow straight out. So we wanna make this look very soft. We're not gonna draw hard. We're very lightly brushing these lines around. We really want to show a difference between his fur and his quills. We want those quills to look sharp. We want his fur to look soft, like you would want to pet him. So I'm just gonna go around. I'm gonna erase right here around his cheeks. You want to very lightly brush that fur very softly around his face. And then we're gonna add just a little bit right up here like an eye, eyebrow. And then we're gonna give him a little bit of fur right between his eyes. So just make sure you're brushing your pencil up very lightly. Now let's give him a little bit of fur on his cheek right here, kind of curving it around. This is gonna make his cheeks look a little bit more full right here because when you close your eyes, look what happens when I close my eyes. These cheeks will lift up, watch. See how it lifts up right there? And that's what happens to him. Look at his cheeks right here. They're all pushed up, which makes his eyes go into this little kind of rainbow shape. So that's where we're getting that kind of shape for the rainbow. Now we can go in and start to give his arms and his shoulders some fur. So right here from underneath his ear, if you look right here, here's his arm. So I'm gonna go right here from his ear and I'm just gonna brush out. Ooh, let's erase this part before I start that. I'm sorry, we need to erase this part. We don't need that circle in there anymore. And I'm gonna break this little arm up a little bit by just kind of erasing it a little bit so I can still see the old line, but that's gonna help me now create his fur. Now remember, your fur or your arm hair would grow down. So if you look at your dog or your cat, if you have one at home, then you would notice that their fur follows the shape and the, of their body. So it's growing down. Now, we, if you have a little space in here, you can add a little fur there and then add just a few little extra furs on his arms, not too many. All right, so now that's all of his soft fur. Let's give him a couple whiskers. So when you're doing your whiskers, what you want to do is set your pencil down and flick your finger out very quickly. So you're going to go like this and set it right here near his nose and flick it out. One, two, three. Real quick. I'm going to do the other side. One, flick it out. Two, three. All right, now we've done all of the soft, fuzzy part of his body. Now we have to change it up because now we gotta do his quills. His quills are gonna look a very different. We don't want them to look soft and fuzzy. We want them to have a little bit more sharp texture to them. So I'm gonna put this photograph a little closer so you can see the difference. All right, you can see there's some long ones right there. You can see how sharp those edges are. It's kind of interesting because it would look like it would hurt, 
but they're actually very soft. They're like our fingernails. They can bend. Now, I don't need this center line anymore. I'm going to erase that. And I'm going to go around and erase this circle very lightly. I want to keep that shape, but I don't really want there to be a hard circle. So go in with your eraser and just very lightly erase it. Now, obviously, I'm using a whiteboard up here. It's pretty hard for me to erase it completely and still be able to see a little bit of the line. So I'm just kind of tapping it with my finger. You'll be using your eraser and just lightly erasing that pencil line. It's just a guide to help you get ready to draw the big curve shape of his body. All right, so we're going to start right up here at the top. And you have two different ways that you could do his outline. Let me show you the first way. So the first way would be you would start right here and you would draw some zigzags like this. Now remember, just like I taught you before, your body, the shape of your body, your fur follows the body. Well, the quilt would follow the shape of the body too. So if it's curving this way, you would want to make those curves following the shape of his body. So that's one idea. If you want to do your quilt that way, this would look really cool. Then when we get to the center, we're going to do the same on this side. Now don't draw yet because you might like the other idea. So this is the first idea. Now notice I'm kind of going zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. And you can see that those quills look very different than the fur. Then all I would have to do is add a few more in side like this. And he for sure looks like a hedgehog. So that's one idea. Now I'm going to erase that and show you another idea. So I'm going to go in with my eraser and erase. So here is another idea. You might like this idea a little better. So I have my original circle here. Now this method, what you're going to do is you're going to start at the top and you're going to go flicking just like we did those whiskers. So I'm going to start right here and I'm going to flick two whiskers side by side so that they come to a point. So I'm going to go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And as I do this, I kind of want them to come and land at a point. Now, this is not the only thing we're going to do. This is just beginning to get that shape in. Now, I'm going to do it on the other side, going the opposite direction. One, two, one, two. Now, don't worry if they don't all connect at the end. So once you have all of those done, in between those, you're just going to go in and add a few extra all around his body. Now I start here in the middle, and I bring from the middle going this direction, and from this middle going that direction. So these quills are going to go this direction, and these quills are going to go this direction. So I don't know, maybe you like this method better. Maybe you like the other method better where we did the zigzag. You'll have to decide or make two. Make one one way and make one the other way. Now, once you have your hedgehog drawn, then you want to make sure that he is standing on some soft grass. So I'm going to go right over here and draw some grass around his body. I'm going to add a little bit of grass around his paws here. And now will come the fun part. So our drawings are going to look like this when we first do them. But now we're going to change it up. And now we're going to start adding some color. So I love when we start adding color because that's when the magic happens. So look at how it changes once you add color. So let me show you what I used. I used my plain old colored pencils. I just used Crayola colored pencils. I don't use anything fancy. And I started, let me come a little closer here so you can see. I started right up here with the lightest color that I could find in my box. 
that was this kind of cream color. And I brushed a little bit of cream on his nose and on his cheeks right here. Because I noticed in the drawing, he had this light cream color right here on his face. Then I went in and added a little bit warmer brown. So I tried these two colors and I blended those in a little bit more. I also added a little bit right up here between his eyes and along those eyebrows that we drew. Now once I had that done, I put a little bit on his chin and then I added a little pink in his ears because you can see they have pink ears and pink paws. So I went in and made his paws pink and his ears pink and then added just a little bit of cream over that. Now for his fur, I could have just left it white, but as I was reading, I found out that they come in all different colors. Their fur can be gray, it could be cream, it can be tan, it could be light beige. So I thought, well, I don't want to keep it just white. I'm going to add a little bit of color in there just to break it up so it's not a hard white. Now, the most important part is getting all that beautiful color in the background. Look at this. There's black and rust and brown and white. So I just played with all those colors. And you know what I thought was interesting as I was reading about the hedgehog, he sees in these colors. He sees in yellows, beiges, and browns. His vision is very poor, as I mentioned earlier, but these are the colors he sees in. And isn't that interesting that those are the colors of his fur? Actually, his quill. I'm calling it fur, but these are his quills. So I hope you had fun today learning how to draw a hedgehog. I had fun teaching you, and you will be... Uh, doing your lesson, and then when you're done, if you can, I would love you to post your picture on my Facebook page. If you are Facebook friends with me, I would love to see your work. So I hope you had fun today.